At this point, we factored a couple of different trinomials using two different methods. And today we're going to look at another special type of circumstance where what we're doing is factoring what we call difference of squares. Now, a difference of squares is exactly what it says. It's a subtraction of two terms that are perfect squares. So you'll see here I have this term a squared subtracted by b squared. And these will all factor in such a way that we get the quantity of a minus b times b minus a. If I FOIL that out, you'll notice this is what I get back. So in essence, we have a binomial term, but each of the two terms are in value perfect squares, and there's a difference between them. You'll see in this case here with x squared minus 36, my first term is a perfect square. The square root of x squared is x and x. So I put those factors in the first portion of my binomial. And then the second term is 36. And the square root of 36 is 6. I'm going to need a negative. So I have a positive and a negative. And you'll see when I FOIL this out, x squared minus 6x plus 6x minus 36. The 6x terms subtract out, and I'm left with x squared minus 36. Factoring different squares, the difference of squares is going to be the same throughout. We just have to identify what the square root of each perfect square is. So here are a couple more cases where we have perfect squares and differences. We're looking at what's the square root of 49x squared? Well, the square root of 49 is 7. The square root of x squared is x. So those are the first terms. The square root of 25 is 5. And I need a plus and a minus. Likewise, with 16y squared minus 81w squared, the square root of 16 is 4, and the square root of y squared is y. And then the square root of 81 is 9, and the square root of w squared is w. Add one, subtract the other because I need a negative. And when we FOIL it out, our result will be 16y squared minus 81w squared. In our next term, we also have perfect squares. However, these are a little bit tougher to see. And we'll notice that uh, when we think we're done, we're not quite done. Let's take a look. Square root of y to y or x to the fourth, but multiplied by itself is x to the fourth. Well, that's x squared times x squared. And then what multiplied by itself is 81. That's 9. And I need a positive and a negative. Now, what we're doing at this point is we're factoring difference of squares. You'll notice what we have left in this product is we have also squares. x squared is a perfect square. 9 is a perfect square. Likewise, x squared and 9 is a perfect square. However, only one of these is a difference. The sum of two squares will not factor. We call that prime. So this term here is prime, which means it can't be factored. In this case here, we have a difference of two squares, which, which continues to factor. So I have x squared plus 9. Square root of x squared is x. And the square root of 9 is 3. And I need a negative 9, so I have a positive and a negative. In this next case, x to the 4th minus w to the 12th. We've already said that the square root of x to the 4th is x squared. What multiplied by itself is w to the 12th. Well, that's w to the 6th. Because remember, we add the powers when we multiply terms of like bases. We need a positive and a negative once again. Again, we have perfect squares because I could have x times x to get x squared and w to the third times w to the third to get w to the sixth. However, once again, in this case, this specific term is prime because it's the sum of two squares. But my second term, 
is factorable. Well, multiply by itself is x squared, that's x. And then what multiplied by itself is w to the sixth, that's w third. And I'll need a negative w to the sixth, so I need a positive and a negative. Now all the terms we're going to do today are fairly easy to see. Well, hey, there's just two terms and there's a difference between them and they're both perfect squares, so I just go ahead and factor them. As we go further and further into our factoring, it's going to be tougher and tougher to see what actually factors and what doesn't. And here's what I'm talking about. We're going to talk multi-step factoring. Now, typically what we want to do is we want to look to see, for instance, today, if we have a difference of squares. Now, we'll notice 12 is not a perfect square, and neither is 48. But there's only two terms, and there's a difference. What I do notice, though, is that with 12 and 48, I notice there's a common factor. So we can do GCF factoring and say, well, there's a 12 in common, leaving me with a squared minus 4. And what do you know, in that binomial that's left, there are two perfect squares. So I've got 12 times a minus 2 multiplied by a plus 2. You'll see again, I have two terms, there's a difference between them, but 18, 32 are not perfect squares. But I check to see if anything will go into either one of these, and surely enough, two goes into each. So I pull out my GCF, I'm left with 9x squared minus 16y squared, and those happen to be perfect square terms. So I have 2, the square root of 9x squared is 3x. And the square root of 16y to the 4th is 4y. I need a negative 16y squared, so I need a positive and a negative, And there's my factoring. Let's continue. In this next term, I notice, well, also a difference, but certainly no perfect squares. But I notice with 15a to the 5th and 60ab to the 4th, there's a GCF. 15 go into both. And there's also an A in common, so I'm going to factor that out. That leaves me with A to the fourth minus 4B to the fourth. And each of those terms happen to be perfect squares. And there's a difference between them. So what multiplied by itself is A to the fourth. That's A squared. And then what multiplied by itself is 4, well that's 2, and b to the 4th, that's just b squared. I need a positive and a negative. Now some of you may be asking, well how about this a squared and this 2b squared? Well a squared is a perfect square, b squared is a perfect square, but 2, there's nothing multiplied by itself that will get us 2, so this is not a difference of squares. Therefore, I'm done at this point here. We look at our next example and we notice, well, this looks like a grouping problem. So let's start out by grouping. I'm going to take these two here and these two here. I say, well, I've got a 3 and an x cubed in common, leaving me with an x and a 2. And then in our next term, I'm going to pull out a negative 3. And I have a x also in common, so I'm left with an x, and once again, plus 2. And you'll notice, here again is a GCF of x plus 2. And then I have 3x cubed minus 3x left. And you'll say, well, there's no perfect squares in this. However, if I look at this first term here, I notice I have a 3 in common. I've also got an x in common. So I'm going to GCF factor once again. And I have 3 times x, which is my GCF. 
leaves me with x squared minus 1 times x plus 2. And you'll notice here's my difference of square term. So I have 3x. What times itself is x squared? That's x and x. And then what multiplied by itself is 1. It's just 1. I need a plus or a minus. And so there's my completely factored term. That was a difficult problem. Next, we talk about solving these terms. And we've discussed this a little bit before. If we have a squared or a cubed term, in our polynomial and we're asked to solve, we want to set aside equal to zero. It's already been done for us. And also, too, we see we've got 25d squared and 100, which are both perfect squares. So I can factor this term to the left right away. I can say that's 5d, because that's the square root of 25d squared. And then 10. For the 100. Now you'll notice in this case as well, I have my positive and my negative. I'm trying to solve this, and I have a zero product principle because here's the product, they multiply to zero. So therefore, 5d plus 10 will equal zero, or 5d minus 10 is equal to 0. Therefore, if I subtract 10 from both sides here, I get negative 10 is equal to 5d. Divide by 5, and I get d is equal to negative 2. Add 10 to both sides here, I get 10 is equal to 5d. And divide by 5, I get d is equal to 2. So I have d is equal to negative 2, or d is equal to 2 and I've solved my equation. Now, in these cases here, this first term, I have a squared quantity, and it's not equal to zero. So, what I prefer to do is I'd like to set that equal to zero by subtracting 36 to both sides. and see if I can factor. If there's anything multiplied by itself that will give me 1 25th, then this is going to factor because I know 36 is a perfect square. Then I have a difference. Just so happens, 1 5th multiplied by 1 5th is 1 25th. I have my 6 and my negative 6. And once again, I have a zero product principle. So I set both of these equal to zero and go ahead and solve. I subtract 6 to both sides, so I have 1 fifth x equals negative 6. Then I'll multiply both sides by 5. Give me x equals negative 30. And then add 6 to both sides here. So I have 1 fifth x equals 6. Again, I'm going to multiply by 5 on both sides. I get x equals positive 30. And that's solved. In this next case, I notice there's a common factor. Of 3 and an a, and then I have a squared minus 9 remaining. a squared minus 9 is a difference of squares term, so I can say that's 3a, a with a 3, a and a 3. I need a negative 9, so that's plus and minus. And once again, I have three terms this time, but the zero product principle still holds. If three terms multiply to zero, then one of those three terms has to equal zero. So 3a could equal zero. 
a plus 3 could equal 0, and a minus 3 could equal 0. Therefore, a could equal 3, or I'm sorry, a could equal 0. Dividing by 3 on both sides, a could equal negative 3, or a would equal 3. do a quick application problem. We've got Marvin who wants to purchase a rectangular rug. We know that rectangular rug is going to have an area of 80 square feet. Can't remember what the length and width is, but he remembers that the length is 8 more than one number and the width was 8 less than that same number. So what that's saying is this is x plus 8 here, and x minus 8 here. And we want to write an algebraic model and solve this equation. So we're talking area. Area is length times width, so that's x plus 8 times x minus 8 equals 80. Now this looks like it's set up for a zero product principle. The only problem is it's not equal to zero. So I can't say that x plus 8 equals 80 and x minus 8 equals 80. This leaves me with the only choice of Poiling. So what I'm left with is x squared minus 8x plus 8x minus 64 equals 80. Gives me x squared minus 64 equals 80. And now, once again, since I have a situation where I have a squared term, I want to set aside equal to 0 at this point. I'll show you another way to do this right after I finish this. So I'm going to subtract 80 from both sides. And I get x squared minus 144 is equal to 0. So this means that Again, perfect squared terms, the square root of 144 is 12. I have x plus 12, x minus 12 equals 0. Now I have a zero product principle because the two are multiplying to equal 0. So x plus 12 equals 0, and x minus 12 equals 0. So x equals negative 12, and x equals 12. We're trying to find the length and the width, and you'll notice this negative 12 makes no sense in the problem because I can't have negative values for length or width. We call this an answer, but it's an extraneous answer, which means it makes no sense in the problem. If x is equal to 12, then I have 12 plus 8, which is 20, and that's my length. And then my width is 12 minus 8, or 4. Now another way to solve this problem, when I only have two terms, when there is a variable term and a constant term, what I could do is the following. I could say x squared is equal to 144 by bringing the 144 to the other side. Once again, this is only going to work if there's a single variable term on one side and a numerical term along with it. If there's a x term, middle term, not going to work. And then I could take the square root of both sides and end up with what multiplied by itself is x squared, that's x. What multiplied by itself is 144, and that's 12. And it could actually be positive or negative. But in this case, we said the negative doesn't make any sense, so x would just equal 12. I'd prefer for this point in time that we solve everything by factoring. That's all we've got. Write out your lesson summary and solve the problems below. And we'll uh, chat about this more tomorrow. Take care.